Hello, students. Hi. Today we want to uh, use it with Flex. So you have to interfacing with Flex. So the Flex routine, which is YYLX, is returning a token to Bison, and Bison is requesting a token. So Bison is requesting and it returns a token. Okay, and your main function is just calling the YY pass routine. Okay, and your YY pass routine is uh, interfacing, is processing your input, and it will do some addition. So he said, I'd like to uh, mute your uh, microphone. So it, the YY pass is reading your input and it is performing some action once uh, the grammar rule should be reduced, okay? So generally, we, in, in the last lecture, we have learned how to generate the right parse, but we just uh, modified the problem to determine the order of uh, operators, which is which will be executed in compile time uh, and execution time. So let me show you uh, the handout today. So let me just share the handout. Can you check the flex and bison of laboratory nine? So using Bison and Flex, so you, you are using Bison with Flex. In the last lecture, you, you didn't have a Flex routine, so you have made it with um, manual, <laughs> manual YYLX. It is just returning a character. So in the last lecture, you have learned YYLX is returning a character. But today you, you can make it to YYLX is returning an integer, which is a token ID. And as you know, the character is included in integer. Character is a subset of integer. So it, it may return, it may return um, normal character as before. So you can return normal characters like this, plus, minus, times, and divide by. So you have four operators. So I used quote here to clarify that uh, plus is not the plus as a special meaning. So you know that this plus is one or more times, one or more digits. But you know that if you quote this, that it is really a plus, okay? And this is another meaning. So it, it can be a range inside of this, but this is a real, um, the actual literal minus. Okay, Damir, you are the audience. Yes, yes. Okay, so Damir, uh, without the quote, what, what is the meaning of times? Of times? Yes, this one. You learn that it is zero or more times. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> you understand that. So you, you just quote this, so you, you are making a literally times. Okay, so in this way you can specify. So it, with this pattern, this pattern means either space or tab, you just skip it. Okay, so with a new line, it will return zero. 
it is an end of input. Okay. So uh, we will use end of input in dollar in uh, normally in, in the writing passing context, but I, I'll explain this. You, you have exp uh, experienced that with a strip to reduce parser. Strip to reduce parser, you have a stack and input. So at that time, if you have one plus two, this, this is the input and the marker. Okay, you have a stack bottom dollar. So, it, so it, it, it is uh, used in as for representing end of input. Anyway, so you have a specified one, two, three, four, five, six, seven patterns. And from seven patterns, it is returning five tokens. Okay. And one of the token is num. You know that, do you remember num? which was used in uh, expl.y. Yes, yes. So that you saw so once you are processing expl.y with bison minus dy and d will generate y.tab.h. And y means it will generate a source as yak y dot tap dot c. So you are including y dot tap dot h inside of c declarations. So that is that will be generated by expl dot y from the expl dot y. Okay. So note that flex input file assumes that assumes the token num is defined, which is actually defined in inside of y.tap.h. So any questions on this flex file? No questions? Okay. And then I'll just score up. So using variables in make file is more convenient to run once you uh, once you have several sources for example, you have variables, sources, and headers here. You have two variables. One is sources, second is headers. So these are the variables. And so why are you asking now? <laughs> what does it mean? Yak info file will only see num zero and operators. No, that does not mean. Ah, so you, you mean the only available tokens? Yes, yes, that's correct. Okay, so I, I misunderstood your question. So actually, yeah, not it is not YAG info file, but why I parse will accept those num and operators and zero, which is input and marker. Okay, so can I keep continue? Yes. Okay. So once you define these sources and headers, which are the variables, if you would like to use it, uh, it is a convention that in a, in a shell, you are using dollar for using it. So dollar sources, and dollar headers in, in a normal shell, but 
in your maker file, you just use parentheses around the names. Okay, so that means if you are going to make evaluate XPR, it depends on the sources, which means that lex.yy.c, y.tap.c. But actually, you may add, you may add. headers here, but as you know, the headers is not used here, but you may, if you want to more accurate, you may add headers as a dependency. And GCC uh, will generate eval EXPR, which is a target, and source files is listed up here. And why the tab the C is generated from your EXPR.Y using bison with flat dy and why the h is also generated from expl.y bison dy and lex.y with the c depends on expl.l and headers because it needs by the h okay so flex even though it is just uh, using expl.l Okay, so any questions on here? No questions? Okay, then I'll draw, uh, I'll switch the screen to your widget W, no, no, MCs. So the same can be performed to your widget W. So let me reshare this. So in the code folder, uh, 2020 compiler and lab nine flex bison. So you can type make file. So it, in um, MCC, it is a cat make file. It is much like this. And I added clean so it, it will restart all things. So the clean means it depends on all the sources and headers and the executable and remove them. Okay, so it is for make it clear. Before restart the uh, rebuilding. Okay, restart for rebuilding. So before we start, let me clear, let me make it clear, make it clean. Okay, so all the sources are deleted and you have to take a look of expr.y. Now that plus minus, this, this may be the solution of your last lecture. Okay. And edit expr.l is just returning number operators and zero. Okay. And it is, it requires by the depth of h. So I'd like to make it. And eval expr is generated. So evaluate XPR means one plus two times three. This is okay, but in the previous one, you 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 had you have not handled uh, Y spaces and multiple uh, with numbers with multiple digits. So one plus two times thirty one is okay. Okay, so you, you are currently having a more powerful lexical analyzer. Okay. Tamir, is this good? Yes, 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 yeah. Okay. So let's take a look of why the tap that H. So Bison parser interfacing something, something. So 
it is just defining a token num here. Sorry. So it, it, it is also defined as the de defined constant, or if it is available, you are using enumeration. Um, so, so it is defined as an enumeration constant, either or defined constant. Okay. So once it is declared, it is included inside of your uh, lex dot y by the c. Okay. Any questions up to here? But you just uh, let me just execute it with eval expression with one times two minus three is an is it this is this goes wrong. So you may see that this is a default action for a coin. This is the default action in a coin. Okay. So it goes wrong for generating the wrong output. Since some of your input characters is not processed properly by your uh, lexical analyzer. Okay. So if you'd like to include a parenthesis here, you have to modify your grammar. So let me just check it from your handout. So today's problem is that the order of operators executed. Write a program using flex and bison, bison reading an expression from the standard input and generating the order of operators executed to standard output. You should start with the following grammar, but you have to extend it. So you know that you have to extend it to include a modular operator and the parentheses should be included. So your yy lex should be extended uh, also, should be extended too. Note that the modular operator is left associative and has the same precedence as the multiplication and the division. And it also has a parenthesized expression uh, is uh, included as a vector. So you have to extend the above grammar to allow unary minus and plus operator, unary minus and unary plus. For example, your program should accept the following expression. So plus, this is unary, and this is another unary operator. So you have to extend it to process this kind of operation. So once you extend it, given the following input expression, for example, your program should print the following output. But before that, let me just uh, make it more simple example, much simpler example. So if you, add, if you write an expression, one plus two times three, which one is executed first? This one or this one? Okay. So time is executed first, and then plus is executed. So you, your output should be times and plus. Okay. So without, without this one, so without this one, which one should be executed first, this one or this one? Left one. What's that? Left one, yeah, this. Left one, yes. This should be executed first because it is left associated. So one, and this has a higher precedence over plus two, and this is the last one, three. So you should, your program should print times modular and binary plus. 
okay? But with this, you know that with this, before the modular operator, you have to evaluate this first, okay? Since it has, it is more higher than the modular operator, okay? But just printing it minus is meaningless because it, it is not, uh, it cannot be differentiated with a binary minus. So if for unary minus, you're adding parenthesized minus, okay? So note that the unary minus operator is enclosed by a pair of parentheses, but the unary operators, your program should print it enclosed by a pair of parentheses. So you have to use uh, for Unary minus, you have to print parenthesis minus. Unary plus, you have to print it in this style. Okay. So this is the final description. So for this input, you have to generate this kind of output. For this input, you have to generate this kind of output. So from this, you have, you have learned that someone is, uh, if someone is telling you that parenthesized expression is evaluated first, there's totally a lie, okay? So you know that this is parenthesized. So is this, is this should be evaluated first? No. You know that this is evaluated first, which is a unary plus, okay? And how about the next one? Then this minus. This is the first, and this is the second. And then this unary minus should be executed first, three, and this is the last one, four. So unary plus, binary minus, unary minus, binary times. Okay, the same is true for this case. So someone is saying that this is evaluated first, that is a line that this is evaluated first. One, how about the second one? This is evaluated second and binary minus, since it is parenthesized. And then for this one and this one, it is left associative. So this is the first one. This may be the last one. Okay, so unary minus, unary plus, binary minus, binary times, binary divide by, okay? So your program should read from standard input and input consists of a single line containing an arithmetic expression using only five operators with parentheses with positive integers allowed for input, okay? So you are not considering a negative literal. Also spaces and tab characters may be included in the input. The program should print to standard output. The output should be the order of the operators to be executed. Each operator should be printed in a separate line. The following shows two sample input and output. Okay. So let me just extend, uh, extend the grammar according to this. So you have to extend it using expr.y and your lexical analyzer should accept opening parenthesis and return it, closing parenthesis and return it. Okay, any questions? No questions? Then you are about uh, 45 minutes to go. Then this, this is the um, 
end of today's lecture. So let's call it a day. So see you next time. Bye-bye.